bonk it, that really technical term. It looked a bit like you've got a slug on your forehead. Hi, I'm Jess, welcome to my channel and this edition, how to create this very natural, everyday glowing skin makeup. So in the daytime, I much prefer that natural, dewy kind of makeup. So that's what I'm gonna show you today. Uh, not only how I do it, the products I use, and if I would recommend them or if I think that there's something better out there. Okay, so let's get started. If I keep looking this way, it's because I've just wiggled my giant mirror across the room so I can see what I'm doing. So first things first, I would always cleanse, tone, and moisturize my skin. I don't use anything particularly extravagant or expensive for this. I really like simple purifying cleansing lotion. Um, because it doesn't irritate my eczema at all. I am of the opinion that it's definitely not broke, so I'm not going to try and fix it. So then after cleansing my skin, I use the Simple Facial Toner, um, which is 100% alcohol free. The only other toner I really like is by The Cow Shed. Um, it's got lavender and chamomile. It smells beautiful and it feels really gorgeous on my skin. So I do tend to alternate between this one and that one. So onto eye cream and I am using the Willowberry Reviving Eye Cream. So in that lovely little pot is pomegranate extract, green tea, probiotics and caffeine. And all of that I do find just helps minimize the dark rings under my eyes. As you can see with no makeup, they are slightly bad. Uh, I have been poorly last week, um, so it's probably worse than normal, but I do find this really helps. So just getting about that much, I don't know if you can see, on my hand and dab that into place under my eyes, just sort of round the orbital bone. You're all gonna tell me off in a minute for not tying my hair back, aren't you? It's because I've got sticky out ears, I don't like tying it back too much. Okay, I'll do it in a sec. Let me just get this eye cream on. Right, moisturizer. I alternate between the Origins Make a Difference Plus. I tend to use this one more in the daytime. And at nighttime, I use the ASOP Perfect Facial Hydrating Cream uh, with frankincense. That's beautiful. I absolutely love this cream. I highly, highly recommend it. I think it's really nourishing for your skin. It's just a tiny bit too greasy for me in the daytime. I find if I put it on in the daytime and it gets in my hair, my hair looks like it needs washing straight away, which is a pain perhaps to do with how I put my skincare on and don't get my hair out of the way, but you know. So I save this one for nighttime and I use this one in the daytime. So I do hope you and yours are all healthy and well and safe. I know it's really scary times at the minute. I'm trying to be really stoic and very British about it and no, keep calm and carry on. I have got a giant collection of recommendations for you from Netflix. We have been definitely keeping ourselves busy, watching loads of movies, binging on loads of series. We can keep each other calm and have a good old chit chat about fashion and makeup and exercise and be there for each other. Okay, so onto foundation. And I would say for the last year, probably, I was using the Shantakai Future Skin. I absolutely love that foundation. I think it is perfect. The only slight downside is it's a bit more pricey than the other ones on the market. Then someone told me about the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Foundation and I figured, okay, I've just about run out of Future Skin, I'll give it a go. Short story, I don't think it's as good as Future Skin, unfortunately. I am continuing to use it, but that's more out of stubbornness, really, that I don't want to waste my money uh, on a foundation. And it's okay, it's okay. That's probably the review I'd give it. Um, gosh, no one wants a review of it's okay. So I'm just using a sponge uh, to put this onto my face. It doesn't give you that really pretty dewy glow that Future Skin does. So in future, I'm gonna spend the extra 20 or 30 pounds, whatever it is, and stick with uh, Shantakai rather than this one because I do feel that that one is much better. So I don't use an awful lot of foundation, but just enough to try and even out the skin tone. And I have got a couple of spots there. I've got a bit of pigmentation on this side of my cheek. So just to even it out. But as you can see, I'm not really taking it higher than my cheekbone because I do find if I put all that foundation on, taking it all the way up to the eye, then I put concealer on, then I put some highlighter on. Before I know it, I am absolutely caked in makeup and I hate that feeling. So just a tiny bit to even out my skin tone is enough. Another new product in my makeup bag, which is also by Charlotte Tilbury, and this I would actually recommend, is her Magic Away Liquid Concealer. I can't remember off the top of my head how much this one is, 
but I remember thinking it was comparable to Yves Saint Laurent Touche Eclair or the NARS uh, Radiant Concealer that I used before. Now certainly in the daytime when I want that really natural glowing skin, um, I'd never put too much on. So just tiny bits on the worst sections, either a spot or some dark circles under your eyes. And it always goes far further than you think. So I just pop a tiny bit under my eye and then dab it into place. I do also take it over the top of my eyelid as well, um, just to lighten that whole area up really. So just take it slow, adding tiny, tiny bits, because you can always add more if you need it, but it's really hard taking it away. And then just put a tiny bit down the front of my nose. I dab it in quite a lot because I find that it makes it stay in place more. If you kind of do that with your eye, you're dragging all the makeup you've just put on, dragging it away. So as I mentioned in Sunday's video, I am going to continue making my videos as much as I possibly can. I do really believe that fashion is a great distraction from all the madness going on in the world. Um, there's only so much news you can watch before you come away feeling absolutely terrified. So I do think sometimes it's good to just turn it off, take a breath, go watch an exercise video on YouTube or watch me waffle about how I do my everyday makeup, whatever it is, just take yourself away from it a little bit. Right, enough coronavirus, we are not going to talk about you anymore, we're going to talk about powder for your face. So I bought this one from, where did I buy this one from, Beauty Bay recently. I do not believe in spending very much at all on powder for your makeup. I think they all must do exactly the same job and I cannot see the value in spending £40 on some translucent powder versus £5 on the one I bought. Makeup artists, you are probably shouting at the screen right now and saying, you're so wrong, I probably am, but please do in the comment section give me a valid reason why I will get so much better coverage or it's better for my skin to use a £40 powder versus this one which I think was under £5. Uh, so I tend to use a brush to put my powder on particularly when I want to have that dewy look because I find if you use a compact with a pad you tend to add a lot more than you probably need and then the overall look is a lot heavier whereas you can be lighter with a brush. So just getting a little bit of powder on there and I am going to do a little bit down my nose a bit on my chin. I want my under eye area to be matte so that kind of masks any bags I might have under my eyes but I want my cheekbones to be quite dewy so that it highlights that area. So I just really carefully pad that in place. So that is my base pretty much done. As you can see it's pretty natural which is just how I like it. So then onto bronzer and I use NARS in the shade Laguna. As you can see this is well worn. Now I do find with bronzer you have to tap off quite a lot because you don't want to end up with a big brown streak up your cheek, which doesn't look so good. So right from your temple, just do circular motions all the way down your cheekbone and then slightly lower into your cheek as well. I like taking bronzer over the bridge of my nose because it makes you look like you've just caught a tiny bit of sun, you've got that fresh glowy feeling. So I do a little bit of a sideways bit across the bridge of my nose and like where the sun would catch you, do a little bit just on that front section of the cheeks. Hello. Do you want some soup? <laughs> so I put a little bit under my chin, again with that theory that you've got a bit sun-kissed. Then I use, right, this set I got a long time ago, well, a long time ago, about a year ago, um, from a brand called Deck of Scarlet. I did an advert for them. They sent me this palette and a couple of other bits and bobs. I like it so much, I have continued to use it a lot. <laughs> so I tend to use the Lovesick Blusher, which I'll show you in a minute. I use that after I've done bronzer. I love this colour smooch for my lipstick and I often have that on. And I also really like bronze here. But I do really recommend this palette because I've used it an awful lot. So this is number seven if you wanted to get that one. Stop waffling, Jessica. So I use this quite rosy looking blusher just on the apples of my cheeks. So get quite a good bit on. Dab a load off so you don't look like Aunt Sally. Smile in the mirror so you look a bit daft. And I just plonk it in that apple of my cheeks. Plonk it, that really technical term. So as you can see, it just looks a tiny bit flushed in the cheeks, but in a lovely glowing everyday kind of way. It's not too much, it's not too over the top. So onto eyebrows. Now I was planning to have my eyebrows microbladed by a lovely lady I met on Instagram. 
unfortunately the day i was supposed to go my car broke down and then all of this stuff kicked off with coronavirus so i haven't managed to go yet however i do really really want to get it done um she's very talented in fact i'm going to put a link to her instagram page in the description below because she does it in such a way that looks really really natural because other times i've seen it it looked a bit like you've got a slug on your forehead for quite a while. Hers didn't look like that at all, which is what convinced me to have it done. So I'm really excited to have it done because I think it will make a big difference, really open your eyes up and shape your face more. But for now, I will have to continue with my little eyeshadow trick that I do instead. So for my eyebrows, I tend to use the second to the darkest shade here. And I just put a tiny, tiny bit on a flat brush so I make a little line like that, and then I'm just gonna feather upwards with that color just to fill in that front section. So I've got some cotton buds and I'm just taking away the excess of that powder. Okay, that's much better. Had a bit of a panic now, very black eyebrows. So onto eyeshadow. So if I'm having an, oh, I look a bit old kind of day, I'll stick to the very matte eyeshadows. If I'm having a bit of a young day, I tend to use more shiny or glittery eyeshadows. And the reason being is that anything shiny or glittery is gonna stick into any fine lines or cracks you might have and possibly accentuate the wrinkles, whereas the matte eyeshadows don't tend to do that. So I've got this palette by Dior, which was part of their limited edition I think it's called happy 2020 collection some really lovely colors in there in fact i like them all so from this palette i'm going to use the white just in the center of my eyes and then i might use the brown as a bit of a lash line so taking the thicker end of my brush that's a bit more fluffy just going to put this right in the corner of my eye which just helps open your eyes a bit more and make them look a bit fresher and then i'm going to use this bronze tone just under this lash line at the bottom here again just to really make my eyes pop out So on a day-to-day -day basis, going for a really natural look, eyeshadow-wise, that is pretty much all I'll use. I've used this for years, and though I have tried uh, different mascaras from the likes of Dior, uh, Yves Saint Laurent, I think I tried a Chanel one, this works just as well, so I think I'll stick with this one. Essentially, I just add a lick, so to speak. I don't want too much on, I don't want it to look lumpy. So just a tiny bit of mascara to define my lashes, but uh, in no way, shape or form, making them feel overdone. Onto lipsticks, and there's a couple of different brands that I use that I seem to rotate, really. Um, so the Smooch in the Deck of Scarlet palette, I use a lot, as you can see. It is well-worn. It's got a bit of a peachy undertone to it. When I'm feeling like I want a bit of a statement lipstick, I always seem to reach for the Dior Rouge, which I have in the shade 999. In my humble opinion, this is the best red lipstick out there on the market whatsoever, bar none. The other ones I use are both by MAC. I've got one called Amplified, and this one is called Velvet Teddy. Hopefully, these are both still available, but they are both very natural shades, which again is what I would wear in the daytime. Today I'm gonna to go with Amplified because I want a really natural look. So I always use a lip brush. I just find it so much easier to control where my lipstick's going rather than using that big head. I always go around with a bud and just take off that excess around the edges just to again make it look as natural as possible. Then as a finishing touch, when I'm putting on my hand cream, there's probably a much more technical way of doing this, but I put my hand cream on, and then just to give myself a little bit more of a dewy glow, just do a very tiny pat over my cheekbones, just to give it one more little bit of glow. And that's it, my natural glowing, dewy skin, everyday makeup that, as you've probably seen, is really easy for you to do yourself. Do let me know in the comment section, one, where are you in the world, how you're doing, and hopefully that you're healthy and safe, but also what you thought to this tutorial and how I do my makeup on a daily basis. Maybe some of these products you already use yourself, and it would be lovely to hear your thoughts on them, but also maybe you know of some better products I could use or other subscribers could use. It's always really nice nice to hear from you. I will be back on Sunday with a very exciting fashion video for you, so don't miss that. Wishing you all the health and happiness to you and yours this week, and hopefully I shall see you on Sunday. Take care.